you can all exhale, relax a little bit. Uh, and, uh, and then um, some of Dad's friends are going to come out. Uh, Betty has a speech that I'm sure will be wonderful. Uh, his, his good friend Doug also has a speech. And then uh, Jaime, uh, one of Dad, it, can I call you his protege? Is that sure. weird? Uh, his dad's a protege, Jaime. Um, you know, my surrogate brother in some ways. Uh, he, he's got a little PowerPoint to do, um, so that will be exciting as well. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we, I had this whole idea where we we're gonna like put a glass of white wine next to the ashes, you know, like, have you ever seen those movies where like a Boston cop dies, and they, like, they, they take a shot of whiskey and they put it on his grave, and they sing like an Irish folk song, so I was like, well, whiskey maybe not, um, but, but white wine, you know, so. Here, that, that'll, that'll serve that purpose, but, you know, hold on one second. You want one. You need something. You know, I'm a... No, no, that's for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there you go. And yeah, there's I, tissues there if anyone no, gets, I'm, you know, needs assistance. Yeah. I'm not going to give this speech unarmed, you know. <laughs> 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 okay, nice. so, so. You've got a few varietals if you're after. have got rosé and... Savion Blanc and Chardonnay. Um, to celebrate your white wine. <laughs> so, uh, my mom and I want to thank all of you for coming to this memorial for my father, James Barnes Ritter III. Some of you may have known him by his more obscure nickname, Jim. <laughs> Old school Ritter fans, though, the real heads, know him as Butch. You'd have to ask Aunt Nancy or Linda what that one's all about, because I never understood it. <laughs> Rumor has it that he was also sometimes called Beans, and, and that one has really baffled me more than anything else. <laughs> but anyway, this deck uh, is a familiar spot to most of you, I think. Almost everybody here has been to gatherings or parties at this house, has stood over there to chat and to drink wine, or uh, maybe to challenge Dad or me in ping pong. Uh, quick side note. I was better at ping pong than him, and uh, that is the last time in this speech that I'll ever say he was second best. Mm -hmm. And you know, I hope that you have fond memories of being out here with us, but I do have to warn you that most of those good memories can probably be credited to the Jim Ritter effect. Uh, he's not around anymore to carry this evening with his jokes, uh, but at least we have wine. <laughs> and I encourage you to keep filling your glasses, and then maybe this speech will seem half as funny as he was. Uh, also, to try and recreate that classic Ritter party feel, I will be conducting a seminar on the infamous cork trick uh, once this speech is over. Hands up, have you ever seen, no. did you ever see my dad do the trick? <laughs> okay, okay, if you, that's a joke with selective appeal, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I do think the cork trick will be one of his longest lasting legacies. Uh, it'll outlive me, certainly. So anyway, yeah, the point of all of that blather was that Dad was a funny guy. Uh, everybody always says so, and everybody is right. Uh, more than just funny, he was a witty guy. Uh, his high school yearbook said that he was quick with a quip. And so, you know, kudos to the yearbook staff of Middlesex class, Middlesex High, class of 1963, because uh, they nailed it. Uh, you know, don't be fooled, though. Wit was not the only weapon in his humor arsenal. Uh, he wasn't above the occasional groan-worthy pun, or even a fart joke or two. <laughs> really, whatever worked, uh, Dad would, would make use of it. One thing that he always used to like to say is that uh, his approach to humor was the shotgun approach. He'd, he'd spray wildly, and maybe you'd hit the target once or twice, but I think we all know that his sense of humor was a lot better than that description suggests. Uh, but I appreciate the image. Uh, it was vivid. Dad was always good with words. But regardless of whether his jokes were carefully aimed or fired from the hip, I think all of us loved to be caught in the crossfire. Uh, Dad wasn't just funny, though obviously that was you know, a big part of the Jim Ritter appeal. Uh, Dad was fundamentally good. He was fundamentally loyal and, and decent. He was really a, he was a helper uh, on a profound level. He, he was the kind of person who made a habit of quietly and without much fanfare coming to the rescue. Uh, he knew how to set things in order and how to make an enormous challenge seem small. How to restore your faith in yourself and in humanity, really, uh, with some calm advice 
uh, a clever plan and a steadfast refusal to leave you behind. And so when I think about the crises in my life, uh, and there have been a few, there have been some big ones, I, I always remember my dad helping me through them, helping me, helping my mom, helping our family and friends. Uh, you know, I, I remember dad convincing me, not just telling me, but logically proving to me that things would get better uh, when everything looked hopeless. And I remember dad and me and mom brainstorming solutions uh, around the kitchen table. He always knew how to get to the other side of something tricky, something heavily knotted, something painful. He wasn't showy about it. He didn't play the martyr. He didn't demand that you grovel and be grateful to him. He just helped you figure things out when times were tough. And he proved to me that nobody makes it alone. Uh, the only way to succeed is with help from good people. So dad was good. Dad was a helper. Dad was witty. Dad was loyal. Dad was a great writer. Dad was a great husband to my mom. And, and dad was all kinds of these big, you know, these kinds of things you chisel on statues. Uh, impressive things, but uh, <laughs> they all make him worth mourning, worth remembering, but you know, more than ever, I, I'm remembering smaller things, uh, you know, mundane stuff. Uh, habits, ticks. Uh, he quote his father, James Jr.'s catchphrases, like, uh, let's ride, red ride, um, <laughs> which was sort of like, uh, we were about to get in the car, and sort of wanted to add an air of like sort of like western swashbuckling. So, uh, that was my favorite one, I think. Um, and then there was this elaborate joke about a beehive uh, and a, something about a spectator as a bee holder. Do you remember that one? Okay, apparently this is a joke that, that, that his dad would tell. Um, but it, 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 was, it was a Russian nesting doll. It had too many steps. <laughs> I, I can't recreate it here, but uh, it was, th that one was good too. Um, it was no ride, red ride, but it was, yeah. Uh, but then, he, you know, he had his own catchphrases, too. Uh, he, would, he would do this. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. He'd say, uh, wait, let me, he, so, so the, imagine you're at a restaurant, the waiter has just poured some wine, and, and they're doing that thing where the, uh, I don't know if they do this so much anymore, but the man is supposed to taste the wine first. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know if it's supposed to be like, is there poison in this or what? But he tastes it. <laughs> look at the waiter and go, you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that always got a laugh, even posthumously. Uh, you know, if not from mom and me, we heard it literally hundreds of times. It's no knock on him that we didn't laugh at it every time. Uh, but the waiters would always laugh, genuinely. It wasn't like a gritted teeth, you're so funny. It was like they, they actually laughed. Um, and then once a week, or more, uh, he would become the creative director of fish and uh, cook his signature dish for my mom, oh, yeah. which was uh, green peppers, onion, garlic, and tilapia. <laughs> and it was a classic. It was delicious. Uh, he elevated that fish. I think tilapia is kind of mediocre, but he, <laughs> he did awesome things with it. Uh, he did. Um, what are some other small things that I've just been thinking of? The speech says things I've been thinking of lately, but things I was thinking of when I was writing this. Uh, <laughs> Dad was genuinely interested in hearing me explain mundane details of my job, um, like just the nonsense cases that I had to work on, or my college classes, um, like on a level that no one else was. Like he wanted to hear, he asked he ask questions that proved he was listening, and if he wasn't really interested, he was like really, really good at faking interest, and, and that's basically the same thing. I think it is genuinely. Um, or the times he called me my boy and, and pat me on the back. Uh, you know, it, into my 30s, like, there was nothing like that. Um, or how every morning growing up, uh, when I was, you know, 8, 9, 10, he'd draw these little comics for me in, uh, in, in Magic Marker. Um, and they were just like, uh, my adventures, like events that happened in my life. Uh, and those were great. Um, and we'd read them together during breakfast. And so I'm going to keep all those small things about him in my head uh, for the rest of my life because you add all the little things up and what you get is, is him, in a way, uh, in, a really, in a real way. So uh, the speech is almost done now and I haven't, I haven't scratched the surface of Dad. Uh, there, was, there was really too much to him. There was too much substance, too much intelligence. 
too much good nature and complexity and love. Uh, I can't fit all of it into a, a short eulogy, and I'm not going to try. But the gist of it all is that I was incredibly lucky to have him as a father. Uh, all of us were lucky to have him in our lives, and uh, he made us better because of him. I think he made me better, uh, smarter, I was more thoughtful, I was better at conversation and, and at thinking when he was around. I was more confident that I could succeed. Uh, I was definitely better at charades when he was on my team. <laughs> uh, and, and now that he's gone, I, I sometimes worry that I'm worse. Uh, that I'll become a dumber and, and weaker person without him. I hope that's not true. I hope that I can hold on uh, to everything I learned from him, uh, to the memories, to the lessons that I either learned carefully or that just kind of seeped in unconsciously. And I hope that I can continue to be the person that he helped make me into. Uh, and I hope all of you can, can do the same thing, because now that there's not a separate person Name Jim Ritter anymore. Uh, Jim Ritter is us. Um, he exists to the people who knew him, uh, the people who loved him, and uh, when we gather, we can call him back to life. Uh, we can combine our memories and our feelings and, and add them up, and we can fit them together like puzzle pieces, and then he'll exist uh, in the spaces in between us. Uh, he'll be alive. And he'll be laughing uh, at our Thanksgiving dinners and our restaurant trips and games of charades and uh, scattergories. And we'll all be better people because of it. Um, thank you again for coming. And it really means so much to me, to my mom, um, to all of us. And uh, I think now I'll, I'll pass the microphone over to one of my dad's closest friends, uh, one of our family's closest friends, and she really is family herself, uh, Betty Green.